Now, some of you who have just checked your bulletins may have noted that I am not the Reverend Preston Hannibal. Preston could not be with us this morning due to illness. And so I invite you to shower a little Holy Spirit on this, your preacher who will share just brief thoughts I have on the gospel from this morning. Let us pray. Take my lips, O God, and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. The words from our gospel are not easy to hear. In fact, they feel shocking to our modern ears as much as they did to Jesus' disciples and the crowds who were listening to his preaching as he declared that he would cast fire and cause division rather than peace upon the earth. So what kind of fire did Jesus have in mind? Well, fire in biblical times was associated with God and with his action in the world and the lives of his people. God sometimes manifested his presence by the use of fire, such as the burning bush, which was not consumed by God when he spoke to Moses. The image of fire was also used to symbolize God's glory, his protective presence, his holiness, righteous judgment, and his wrath against sin. It is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit, those flames that appeared above the heads of the apostles on the day of Pentecost. You see, God's fire both purifies and cleanses. It inspires with its reverent fear of God and its presence in us. The first time I saw a house fire, I was about eight years old. A neighbor's home was almost completely destroyed. And although it was frightening to see, there was also this fascination that seemed to draw others from blocks away because they had seen the fire's smoke. Fire, yes, has a destructive nature, but when used in a controlled manner, it has a creative power. Think about in glass blowing, wonderful pieces of art that are created. Think about controlled burns of land so that new growth may be started. And fire also has a quality of comfort. Warming in a controlled grate or fireplace, it also warms the heart when we sit back and watch flames, when we chat with one another in fellowship, or when we think or pray. So what could Jesus have meant? Well, I believe that the flame of God, yes, can be frightening in that it demands a world of justice and peace and reconciliation. You see, Jesus comes to bring all sorts of fire to the world and to send the spirit of comfort and justice and peace and, yes, hope to all who are his disciples. But to be a disciple of Jesus Christ yes comes at a cost. Sometimes that cost is at a family level. The message of Jesus may divide us, but if it does, the love of Jesus can unite us, for love is the most powerful gift we have from our Savior. When the civil rights movement began growing in the 1950s and 60s, 
My parents were in their late 20s. Their participation in the movement here in a desegregated Washington brought nothing but fear to their parents. Why should they put themselves in harm's way? And some parents didn't want their children involved because of the fear of what would happen to them as they fought for what they knew was right at a time that was difficult but demanded their action. So if we are truly disciples of Christ, we know that there is a cost to seeking justice and mercy and that the choices are never easy. Choosing to love and follow Jesus will create division and conflict. The sword of division about which Jesus spoke is the result of Christ-like love. It's dangerous, folks. To love people as Jesus did is to stand for something. To stand for justice is to stand against injustice. To stand for truth is to oppose hypocrisy and falsehood. To be a Christian is to love all that Christ loved. And he calls all of us to love each other as he loved. You see, our hope is that as we reflect the light of Christ in the world, that fire of the Holy Spirit, we will find the strength to literally seek and strive for justice and peace among all people and to seek and serve Christ in all persons. That is the promise we renew at each and every baptism. Jesus challenges his disciples, and yes, he challenges you and me to embrace that fire. For a true disciple loves God above all and is willing to forsake all for Christ. So this day, as we hear those difficult words from Jesus, I ask that you consider this prayer for your lives. Lord, may your love consume me and transform my life with the power of the Holy Spirit fire, that I may truly desire nothing more than life with you Make me strong in love and fidelity that nothing may hinder me from doing your will. Amen.